guys, welcome back to La Cancha. I'm here with Oscar today, and we're going to discuss all the ins and outs of Spanish football. But we're going to start outside of Spain. We're going to start in Morocco, actually, because Real Madrid are Club World Cup champions. And how big of an achievement is this for Los Blancos, Oscar? It's a huge achievement. You know. And the last year was a really good year for the club winning the league, the Spanish Super Cup and Champions League, and then as consequence of winning the Champions League, you have a good chance to win the UEFA Super Cup and the um, Club World Cup. So, congratulations to them. Yeah, did you see uh, Arturo Vidal's comments in the semi uh, and... <laughs> At least he didn't get to embarrass himself against Real Madrid this time. So, yeah, you just, that. See, yeah you just see what's up with Vidal and stuff. And the final seems to have lots of goals, eight goals, 5-3 in the end, Real Madrid won it. And but let's switch back to Spain because in La Liga, Real Madrid are in trouble because Barca win narrowly against continue at the top. And with this Kyron at the bottom, I, I feel I just have to copy and paste this because that seems like that's what Barca is doing most of the time these days. They just win in by the odd goal and teams can't find a way to break them down. Barcelona also can't find a way to score the second goal sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't honestly like... Some of these decision making the final third really do- does my head in, but you know, when you have a monster like Araujo at the back who just gets in the way of everything, I guess you can get away with that. Yeah, you really can. And you, I think you can say the Real too, like both teams are wasteful. Morales had that one chance where it was one on one with the goalkeeper, and he also made poor decisions, but. All in all, I felt it was like a good game for both sides. Both sides played really well, but they made some mistakes in the final third. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Barcelona, the attention now turns to the Europa League because on Thursday, they welcome Manchester United or they go to Manchester United. I'm not too sure. No, we welcome them. It's they welcome about them. And how do you see that going? Because like you obviously follow United a lot. and um, where... Do I? I laugh at them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Um, they, there's no question that my United have improved since, you know, they got rid of the toxic mess in the dressing room. <laughs> okay, but on the serious note, they have improved in the last... <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did you know I was going to slander Ronaldo? <laughs> oh, man. Just down. Well, it is predictable. But <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, Rashford has been in good form. Bruno Fernandes is scoring goals again. They've lost Eric since we injury and replaced him with Sabit, so... And, well, he hasn't really integrated himself into the team yet, but they seem to be doing fine so far. Yeah, so it should be... And where do you think Bars... Like, do you think Barcelona should start with a very strong team, given that the gap is so big in La Liga and it seems like they're just winning games at ease at the moment? Yeah, I mean... The gap is momentarily 11 points. Real Madrid should beat Elche on Wednesday. If they don't, good. If they <laughs> do, it's still good. <laughs> but Even if, eight, eight points is still a lot at this stage, given what uh, Barca is in. Anything can happen. This season is still long. Yeah. As for... False humility won't get you anywhere, bro. <laughs> it's not false humility. I, I, I am all too familiar with Barcelona's fragility at times so we have to see okay that's that's be, listen we have to play them three times in like a month yeah that can make or break our season depending it can definitely break our cup season the league maybe not but you know but anyway back to your question yeah i think for our league games we could play torres and fatty more and i go just go back to the Three midfielder stuff. Since we have like Busquets is injured and Dembele is injured, we might want to think of resting one of the midfield four against Cadiz or against Almeria when we get there. And then against them, um, my United probably play the same team that played yesterday. Yeah, and are you confident going into that game? Yeah. I don't know. I. I if we, we, cause this team, while they 
like to suffer a lot. They have it in them to blow teams away. So hopefully the team, the version that showed up against Sevilla, Betis and um, Real Madrid will show up on Thursday. If not, the other version can still do the job. <laughs> yeah, the other team that's going to be in action this week uh, from Spain is Sevilla. And they're really playing re- well at home these days. Uh, they did really well against Mallorca. Mallorca are, are notoriously poor away from home. But I felt the first half, although I know you possibly got seizures seeing the lineup <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and seizures seeing where each players were playing. But I do think this was their best performance in this like two years. Nine, nine season, two years that I've seen. Two years. <laughs> in the first half, they were that good. They created chance after chance. And I don't know what Papa Gay ate for lunch, but he was all over the place. He was a mm-hmm. left back. He was a center attacking midfielder. It was a right attacking yeah. midfielder. That was a very good assist for him. Yeah, he was, he was amazing. Yeah. Well, the lineup did make me despair, you know, once again, because I saw Brian Hill, a talented attacking player playing at left. It says it's not left wing back, it's essentially left back. Not how you look at it, but, you know, it's what, um, I would say, let me not give him too much credit and say it's what he scored a goal. So yeah. I'm happy for Brian Hill to score on his birthday. And Sevilla, so, yeah, you know, they've really picked it up at home, especially. Yeah. And, Four wins in the last six games. Yeah, and important four. wins because all of, except this one, all of the other wins have come against teams that are in and around them. So that's good for them. You know, yeah. they away from is now the next step to you know improve. But sure. good for them so far. And even now, we're like because we've praised Girona a lot. Like I know between City and Girona, like it's nice and day in terms of the budgets and expectations, but. They're not level on points with Girona. They're four points of Mallorca, which who we've praised a lot. And it just shows like the improvements I, I think we've seen so far with this team, especially with Yusuf and Asiri, who couldn't score a goal before the, the World Cup break and after the yeah, World he's Cup. He's playing for his severe future, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he really is, because there were rumors that Monchi went to sell him in, in the winter, they went to sell him last summer. Mm, Maybe they, they could have easily cashed in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Because of his World Cup performances, they can easily cash in on him, but he loves the club and wants to stay. So, I mean, fair play to him, honestly, for not chasing the bug. Yeah, and what do we think about them going away to PSV Eindhoven because, uh, or welcoming PSV? Because PSV, they've been weakened by our good friends in England. The Gapo went to Liverpool, Maduete went to Chelsea, I believe. And it's a different team from PSV in the first half of the season. Yeah. When this draw came out in was November, right? I was like, so we are playing so terribly right now. I don't see them even beating like these teams that they just beat. So I thought PSV should take it. But yeah, the fortunes have changed a bit. I haven't really followed PSV this season. So besides Gakpo and Madweke and Luke De Young, of course, yeah. I don't really know what they did to replace those two players, but I'd imagine they'd have replaced them. Yeah, they brought Fabio Silva. No, okay, yeah. The guy that was on the the guy that was in Wolves. Yeah. And I still think one player for Sevilla to watch out for is um um former La Masia kid. Why am I why is his name slipping in my mouth now? Uh Shabby Simons. Yeah, Javi Simons. He's having a great season, so you should watch out for him. And also the coach of um, PSV is famously won the Pichichi in La Liga. Reverse yeah, so well, that'll, sure. that'll be an interesting uh, fasting yeah. battle. And yeah. we'll see I, feel, I feel that game will definitely tell us more about if Sevilla are a team that can bully the relegation guys or their mid-table team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, you know, but because we, we laugh at them, but they're not too far off. The mid table at the moment. They're not too far off relegation, well, too. Either, so. This can this, this can all go yeah. turn upside down, but you know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll just have to see. Let's move on to your city rivals, Betis, who were in an Andalusian derby against uh, Almeria. And honestly, in the first half, I sort of felt for Betis because they created so many chances. They mm-hmm. created chance after chance. They hit the bar. And I was like, is this going to be one of those days? But Fair play, Sergio Canales. He had one of the, his best games of the season. He was 
all over the place and he scored a beautiful goal he created a lovely assist and it, it was nice to see him play this way yeah and Borja, you know, he's been he's <laughs> looking for goals and he hit the post twice. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you know, it was a very good game. I was like, I I felt this can be a good game because Betis have suddenly remembered how to score goals. Yeah, they forgot how to keep goals out, and Maria at home are normally very entertaining. So, yeah, it made for a really good derby. Yeah, it did. Al Maria, they they're under pressure. Um... After the results against Rayo, uh, Ruby uh, made some comments in press conference that if his team were in the relegation zone, that he would understand. Or if they went eight games like losing, they would understand. But they're still above the relegation zone. But that picture is a lot tighter now. Uh, do you think it's this is just a momentary slip because they're playing against the top teams in La Liga with Betis and Rayo at the moment? Or do you feel there's something secondly wrong that he needs to address? Hmm. I guess we'll find out. I'm not, I'm just looking at who they played against recently. And they, uh, uh, personally, I don't think their form has been terrible. They they beat Espanyol, drew and lost a couple of games. And then um, yeah, they're playing Girona next. So I think that be, I'll be able to answer that question better if they win or lose against Girona. And Girona have been falling like a stone at the moment. So, but we'll get onto them later. Uh, for Betis, though, it's, it must be sad for them because the other two teams that they were chasing all of a sudden decided that they were going to win this weekend. We'll start with Atletico and Memphis Depay. He rescued Atleti, 10 man Atleti. No, Depay didn't rescue Atleti. All that did. All that did. <laughs> yeah. But Depay was the one who got the goal, so we have to give him that credit. And, you know, we always fear strikers. <laughs> but before before that, Atleti, this was... We praised them after the World Cup. We've said they've gotten better, but in this game, they went back to the battle days or the go-to days, if you don't like them. And uh, they, were, they were awful in first half. They were really awful. And Celta, they, they tried their best, but they couldn't break them down. And... If you're Atleti, right, and you look and you look at Celta Vigo's lineup and you see that Tapia is the center back, you have Mingesa right back, although he's, he's improved, you must be licking your lips for this. This is what you want, but... Yeah, especially Tapia at center back is not familiar with the rule. And to, you know, to give everyone their credits, the goal came from Tapia playing the pie offside. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, um, I also felt, I felt Celta are really wasteful, especially Carlos Perez, who ends the game by, like, miscontrolling the ball and letting it go for a throw in when he <laughs> needs to equal that. I was yeah. like, this guy just went from having the game of the, his game of the season against um, Betis, but, you know, regress back to the mean this week. <laughs> yeah, he did. Like, he went back to thinking it was, like, a certain... Uh... Set a city and trying to shoot from all over the place, but that that doesn't work. I, I wonder why he tries to do that over and over again. But let's talk about Jan Oblak because we've criticized him over the last couple of seasons. His performance has dipped. He's no longer the best keeper in the world, as we used to proclaim La Liga fans. But he made some really crucial saves in this one. Although the the Aspas save, which everyone is talking about, I feel that was an error by him that he recovered quite quickly from. Yeah, yeah, Oblak was, you know, prime of Black Topus on Sunday. And that's why I'm like, he's the one that rescued Atleti. The pie just, I mean, obviously he has to score that goal when he gets his way, but the platform was given to them by Oblak. And speaking of goalkeepers, I also thought Ivan Vea, who's just had to step in for the injured Marquez and had a good game on Sunday. It's just a shame that, you know, they lost it late. Honestly, he's considered four goals, but he's not been bad. It's just Celtic's defense exactly. is so leaky at the moment. Yeah. But, and Savic, though, is another proper name in this game. He keeps I have a story about, about Savic. Yeah, what's your story? I was playing FIFA today, and yeah. I was using Atletico Madrid, and I made a tackle and got a red card. <laughs> Guess... <laughs> Guess the player that got sent off for me. Uh, our, our boy Stefan, no? <laughs> yeah, it was Stefan Savage. Yeah. I was like, oh God, even in the game. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, he has the look of a brute, right? But he, he hadn't really been getting red cards in domestically until this season and the volume that he's getting it. Yeah. Like in in twenty twenty three has already received three red cards. He has missed some games due to injury, he has missed a game due to yellow card accumulation. Nobody knows why. You know, um Simeone doesn't want to play him as anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. I feel with a minute though. It's it's crazy how things turn out in life because a year ago or two or six months ago, if you had told me that Mario Hermoso would be the most reliable center back in Atletico Madrid, I would have laughed your face off. But yeah. that's what's turned out to be because Hermoso has been so good at the back. He controls the ball well. He allows the play to go on really good. So I think that's why Jimenez hasn't been started because Hermoso has been in such a good moment and. We'll see what happens if Jimenez and Emoso play together and whether they can continue that partnership. But I feel with Savage, I also feel with Jimenez, and I feel with their entire backline is something that they might just need to refresh. They might need yeah. to refresh the entire team this summer, regardless of what happens, because it's just things aren't just working out in, in some ways. Like sometimes it's good, but it's only lasts for a couple of games and then they just return to type and they just make those basic errors that they shouldn't make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. They need to refresh. Yeah. Not just the backline. I feel they're due for refresh on the wings because yeah, yeah. Griezmann is their only reliable attacker. Everyone else is just so inconsistent. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, Carrasco, I was surprised he actually got the assist through because normally he goes for the shot. He's a bit more soft. That, that was not an assist. He, he was going for the shot. He <laughs> got deflected. <laughs> Why give you too much credit? I know. I know. I was just trying to help it, help a guy out. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if we, if we talk about teams that are on form and doing well, we have to talk about Real Sociedad because they, they have that bounce back ability. They had the game against Vidalid where they lost and the game against Real Madrid where they couldn't they only got the tie at the Bernabeu, which which is a good result. And they just bounced back against Espanol. They sweep them aside. Three zero, they ran up three zero winners, but Espanol also scored a couple of late goals to make the game a more closer than it, it was. Mm-hmm. This Real Sociedad side, they're starting to go from a category of maybe they will finish fourth to they're definitely gonna finish fourth. And this results really hurts a team like Betis. Yeah. I mean, besides the fact that the Chasers have been dropping points, like Villarreal with their bloody injury crisis and Betis, you know, being inconsistent, we also say that on their own, they look like a team that will get top four without needing any help from anyone else. And you can even make the case for top three at this rate. Yeah, you can. And if you have 42 points at this stage, like that's... With 21 games, that's really that's good enough to finish in top four. Yeah, I'm bearing a complete disaster. And to be honest, if they were to get knocked out in the Europa League before the quarterfinals, it's not really a bad team because they'll just focus on. At least I feel for them. I felt like for them and Bet, it's like the goal should be to get top four and go far in the Europa League. If you can do both, that's great. If you can only do one, that's great. But at least do one, you know? Yeah. And and, and as we keep saying every week, it's that they're doing this without players who would be reliable players like David Silva, like Mikel Medino, who are still out. There's also Brandon Ekshay who's playing a right back at the moment. Uh, it's it's crazy what they're doing. It's really, it's really outstanding. You can't give them high enough praise to give performance after performance with so many players out. And you just hope that when the Europa League does come, they're able to have all these players back and able to give a really strong showing and performance. Yeah, hopefully they can get that solo back soon. Didn't he play? No, I could have sworn I saw him in the lineup somewhere, but he didn't play. He didn't didn't play. play, yeah. Maybe, maybe you were thinking Kubo is David Silva because he's been so good. <laughs> yeah, Kubo has really, you know, he has really silenced his critics, aka <laughs> up to of us. <laughs> so, you know, we have to give him his credit. He's yeah. having a great season. It's just FIFA would look at it and be like, oh, 
No, no, no. He doesn't play in the Prem. Let's not make him a 76 <laughs> at least rated player. Yeah. And and speaking of players silence in their critics, like Sorloff, like at one point I called him one of the worst records in, in Spain. <laughs> We're just at that point. But now like he's he's such a reliable goal scorer. He has like eight goals or nine goals already this season. He's definitely gonna hit double digits if he keeps on going at this rate. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. So I have scored a lot of goals, but we have to contextualize something. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the stats. He has he scored nine goals. Yeah. Let's look at his big chances missed. <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll, please. Do, do you have that effect? Okay. Wow, this guy's prepared for everything. Okay. <laughs> big chances missed. Um, Wow, there's some really poor strikers in the... Okay, 10 big chances missed, 9 goals. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought it... It's not as bad as it was two weeks ago, but... <laughs> it's a good enough conversion. I feel like this is something people should look at, because let's take Gerard Moreno, for instance. He, yes, injuries have not helped him, but he's had scored 5 goals and missed 11 big chances. Wow. That's not good. Insane. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah there, there's uh, uh, anyway. With else problems, uh, we've talked about them so Let's just yeah. focus. Yeah, speaking of missing big chances, one team that's amazing at missing big chances at the moment is Valencia, and this game. I was, thought you were going to say Espanol because we no, haven't talked about them yet. Sure, sure. Just I just want to transition away from them and go to Valencia. And fair enough. Fair enough. Quick rant. And you know what? I, I, this game made me somewhat more confident, although it's the game that put Valencia in the relegation zone, something that they haven't been in the second half of the season for the first, since 1986 when they actually got relegated. But when you have a game like this and you see the way the Valencia team played, despite the fact there were like external events going on outside, the fans were protesting outside Mestara up until the 19th minute when they came back in, I felt Valencia, this was in La Liga, this was the best game they played all season in the second half because they put a strong team like Athletic under pressure. It was somewhat like the Atletico game where the best player in the picture is Unai Simon, who made some really good saves, but Athletic, they were just so clinical and they got the job done for them. And Nico Williams, he created an amazing goal. And poor mistakes has made Valencia not get the win again. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what Chomer was doing dribbling out of the back at 1 1. That's just. Yeah, I mean, you look at Valencia, and this performance was a good performance, like you said. But individual mistakes keep letting the side down. The other week, um, it was um, Oscar making a huge mistake to make it 2 2 to Almeria, which could have been an extra two points right now. Yeah. Yeah, so. I don't know. And then you have the whole coach situation. You know, the fans, you know, protesting is definitely not going to help the players. So yeah. it's it's kind of funny how the fans are winning until the fans came back in. Because yeah. <laughs> it's going to be the 17th minute. Yeah. Yeah. That, that but, that's, that's you awesome. know, the game against the Tafi next week is absolutely huge. Like, yeah. It's it's do or die because at that point, it's like you're playing against a direct rival. If Hatafe wins, for example, you're 19th. Like, yeah, 19th. Like, relegation in the like, 19th spot, like several points away from the relegation zone. And that's that's unacceptable for a big club like Valencia or a former big club. Um, <laughs> Exit club. Yeah, but there's there are rumors about the manager. The, the manager situation, I'm not super sure because Baraja has been linked and I, I feel that's asking for relegation. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel if you get a guy like Mandilaba that's asking for relegation with Vicente Moreno, um, who was coach of Espanol last season, I do like him. I do feel he's a manager who can change situations of clubs in this kind of situation like he did for Espanol because he did okay with Espanol. They, it ended poorly, but they were comfortably safe. So if you can get a manager like that, I think that would help because he has that experience in fighting the fires of relegation. Tato Martino, I feel that would be a total disaster, man. He might just... It, the barbecue to the Segunda may be nice, but 
<laughs> I don't think he'd be a great manager for the club. What do you think about the choices I've laid out? You guys need help, man. <laughs> I, I'm not confident in any of those managers. Mm-hmm. Honestly, if you, you, to be honest, I'll be honest with you. You could bring Pep, you could bring Ancelotti and fuse them together. And they might not make it because Lim will just frustrate the hell out of them. So I don't know, man. Yeah. Word on that, 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 that said, out of all of them, I guess we sent to Mourinho. It's just that he, he's kind of he's kind of a passive manager. Like, yeah. like in terms of his teams are pretty passive. So I don't know if that's what they need right now. But you can't argue against his experience. So. Yeah. Like, like the best option would be to bring Borderlass back and just like eat your gun and just do it. But <laughs> I, I'm I'm not sure whether the uh, Peter Lim has the humility for that. So um, yeah, he doesn't. Doesn't. And but we have to give credit to Athletic. There were two teams on the pitch, and they were the ones who were eventual winners. It's back to back wins for them. Next week they go to the Wanda Metropolitano. They're I believe they're seventh again. Yeah, seventh now. And do you see this like momentum pushing on up until let's say the cup semi final when they have to play also soon? Let me look at their games. Okay, after that, let's go let's go the app during that and also sooner. I suspect they'll be re- they'll go really hard for it um, when they play Atleti and then maybe ease up a bit against Jurna. But I also think depending on the results, like if you beat Atleti and you're three points behind them, then you should take Jurenda very seriously too. Yeah, yeah, because so. you, you never know. Like, And also, they're in, they're in that sort of situation where Villarreal could easily get better and put them under severe pressure in terms of maintaining that European spot. And mm-hmm. we don't know how good Ryo can be. They're in, I believe they're sixth at the moment, but we don't know how well they can maintain it because it's so tight between uh eighth and eighth and fifth at the moment yeah yeah let's move on speaking of Girona, let's move on to them and they got tormented by Cadiff and with Cadiff you can see the difference between a team like that's run like Cadiff and a team that's run like Valencia because Cadiff they brought a bunch of new players into the squad and players that have yielded fruit very quickly because Escalante scores and he was brought in the winter window. Same with Sergio Guardiola. He was brought in the window, winter window from fellow strugglers by the lid and now they're out of the relegation zone and their home fans must be loving them because they haven't lost at home at least since the Barcelona game. Mm, yeah, it's, they've not lost at home since we played against them. That's nice. That's a nice um, record. Obviously, like Sevilla have shown, you have to take your home get, make your home ground a fortress in the relegation dogfight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, same Sevilla and relegation dogfight is still somewhat <laughs> unbelievable. But anyway, it's not just the new signings that are paid off for Cardinals. These summer signings have started you know, sinking their teeth into the league. Like yeah. Teo Bongonda is playing well now. Brian Campo is absolutely... Destroying every right back he meets these days. Yeah, yeah there's, there's uh, no way he stays a Cadiff after the season. No yeah, way. yeah, I, I guess so, but we'll see. Either way, you know, their their momentum can't be any more positive right now. <laughs> it could get a lot more positive if they beat Barcelona account now, but. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we can't we can't let that happen. So yeah, let, let's not forget like the last time Barcelona were in this kind of monstrous run. I think Cadiz were in Yeah, Cat- like. uh, here's the thing, right? <laughs> I don't want Valencia to go down. So he, he, being that being that that is me, the worst possible thing that can happen for both of us <laughs> is we lose and get half a beat you. <laughs> So, you know, for, for the sake of Valencia, I hope Barcelona take care of Cadiz. Because I don't know why Girona didn't do it. So, yeah, And sense. also on Girona, a very sad thing happened. Wow. Alex Garcia got less than a seven on Super School. Oh, wow. That's, that's dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it will be traumatic for me if I decide to bet on him for once, but you know, I, I won't do that. <laughs> yeah, but Michelle described this as Cadiz. I'm sorry, Girona's worst performance so far. Yeah, it was. He had to take off one of their best players. It was that bad. <laughs> But like, yeah, and yeah. I know Martinez. Honestly, people that were, want to buy him, if you did look at this game, they have every right to see that his value has decreased because <laughs> Ocampo ripped him to shreds. Yeah, you know, maybe that's a, for, for his development, maybe that's not that bad because, like, people are speaking about moves to Atletico or to Barca. And I just feel if you're a young player, you're 21, you're, you have your first experience in La Liga, you don't want to be like Odrio Sola. A couple of years years ago, who just burst onto the scene and he was amazing. Then he gets uh, and get destroyed by Brian Hill. Yeah, <laughs> no, sorry, that was not Brian Hill. Sorry, um, Kukure. <laughs> yeah, he gets that move to Real Madrid and it's nowhere now. <laughs> so yes, yeah, he, he plays for Real Madrid, but like he, it's like Hazard. He barely realized that he's there. Yeah, it's better than Hazard. At least yeah. the coach thinks about picking. Yeah. It's so funny. Even I associate Mariano as more of a Real Madrid player than. Hazard. Exactly. Uh, yeah, speaking of the there, let's go to the Madrid Derby, the other Madrid Derby. And here, there was a tale of penalties, goalkeeper mistakes, um, good football, bad misses. Where do we start? Um, the only goal that's the open the scoring would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, the the only, the only goal was out of nowhere because like the corner comes and <laughs> all of a sudden I'm like everyone is celebrating but like everyone looks puzzled and laughing and no one is like really taking it but that sort of took the game away from Etafe but I felt with Etafe the strange thing is after they got the red card they started playing so much better almost as if Alenia is a hindrance more than you help <laughs> these days huh? <laughs> yeah. it's almost as if you know the more attacking players that Taffy have on the pitch, because I don't think they like adjusted to that change. Because he brought on Munir, he kept um, Mayoral and Nala. Honestly, I feel like if you want to play the five defenders team, play it, but like have enough presence in the your opponent's penalty area because other because you look Taffy only got a goal because um they Brian made a huge goalkeeping error, so you need to give your strikers more opportunities to score goals because we now has goals in him. Mayoral sometimes has goals in him. And penalty misses. <laughs> that was an awful penalty. Which one's worse? The Mayoral penalty or the Data Mass penalty? I can't lie. I'm going to go for the Data Mass penalty for two reasons. Number one, the fact that he thinks he's that guy <laughs> a lot kind of annoys me. Number two, ex Espanol. I even found the third reason. The expert ex Espanol just came to me now. The third reason, the run up. Like, you're not at the risk, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that, that was not like if, if you wanted a penalty and you were right, your fan and you saw Data Mass stepping up, you would have thought, oh my God, this is our moment to win it. But, but sadly, it wasn't the case. And we have to give it. Even if it's a toughest penalty. Yeah. Why didn't you now take it? And this is not my fanboyism coming out. Like, why? He took the last penalty that got to a point. Yeah. Simple logic and common sense <laughs> should dictate he takes... This is my problem with a lot of people in this league. There's a lack of common sense. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <laughs> that's so true. But now they get his goal, and he did dedicate it to um, yeah, yeah, that was really Syria and Turkey. Uh, now it's obviously Turkey, so that was a, that was uh, really that was really, that was really touching. Yeah, and with Kike Sanchez Flores, it begins to sound like Jose Mourinho because he keeps talking about the moles in the dressing room and um, something's going on. And Must be the ex Madrid in him always complaining <laughs> when things don't go. Oh, they're Madrid fans that listen to this. So I should keep going. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. thank, thank, thank you for listening. Please don't <laughs> uh, don't stop listening on account of my bias. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, I wonder why they've not sacked him yet. Based yeah. on those comments, it's, it's clear that a lot is not right in the dressing room. Like you even have 
rumors of players not even being fully into it too. Yeah, like Maximovic, we've not seen him at all. And he's, yeah. he's, at, he's like basically identified as the problem. And also you see what's happening with the fans. And in this game, after Hetafe went one nil down and the red card came, there were lots of uh, PK go now chance. So I'm not sure how long he lasts in the job. If, uh, by the way, if a certain club in yellow keeps losing games, there might be another Kiki chance <laughs> to <laughs> again. But you know, yeah, we'll see. The last game is also sooner by the lead, and um, that's that's all we're gonna say about it <laughs> uh, because they ended zero zero. So we just go to go to the table <laughs> unless you have any comments. No comment. No comment. So uh, yeah, we can. La Liga on Sundays is a painful thing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can admire this beautiful table with Valencia at the bottom. <laughs> Say that in chest. Uh, and uh, not just the bottom. Look at the like direction. Red yeah. and going down. <laughs> the trend is not good. <laughs> yeah, trend definitely isn't isn't very good for Valencia. Actually, in the bottom, it's only Cadiz and, and Sevilla that are going in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, Real Betis and Atletico are going in the right direction at the top. Real Sociedad and Atletico are on uh, stay the same in the top four. Uh, Barcelona, obviously, it's an 11 point gap now. And it'll be it on Barons, they don't worry. Yeah, I guess the question now is who can stop them? Will it be Cadiz? Uh, we can talk quickly about the Champions League. Uh, just a moment and what's the champions league i i don't know it's a it's a strange <laughs> competition i don't know which the uh, europe league is a superior competition if you ask yeah, me yeah but tomorrow is valentine's day and you know what it's like for uh true, true, for, true, true. for us single for us single guys either we be depressed who is or us or, yeah you're different but like <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking either we're depressed about valentine's day or we enjoy the champions league so i look forward to february 14th yeah, the champions league. champions league day yeah, and in February 14, we have a... Bro, you just brought up my PTSD about the Valentine's Champions League game. Oh, oh no, yeah, yeah. And a certain Paris Saint-Germain is playing on, as well on Valentine's Day. And a certain Messi. Yeah, I team missed team. that guy. This time they're on the same team, and they're playing against Bayern Munich, who have been in terrible form so far. But, they, but they've won, Bayern have won their last two games. Sure, sure, PSG's injuries keep piling up, and... But I didn't see Messi and Mbappe are back in the squad, so who knows? Yeah. I mean, no, they can stop playing Soler at. Um, <laughs> uh, honestly, yeah, I looked at Twitter and PSG fans are just cooking the poor lad. I'm like, damn. You shouldn't have Valencia that. needs you. You need some penalties too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> poor lad. Poor <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, but, how, um, how do you see this game going? Depends on how fit Messi and Mbappé are. And it's at the Parc de Princes, right? Because yeah. PSG fans. I, I'm going to give this to Bayern just based on the fact that PSG's form hasn't has kind of tailed off with two defeats against Marseille and Monaco and then, you know, the injuries. Yeah. Will but Messi and Mbappe even last 10 minutes, 20 yeah. minutes? Who knows? The fun thing with the Monaco game is that they had a stomach bug, and that's what led to a lot of players being absent, so maybe they would, they would recover from that. Uh, the other game on that on, on Valentine's Day, or Champions League Day, as we're calling it in this podcast, is Milan versus Spurs. Um, a month ago, when this draw came out, I was confident Milan were going to go through, but now I'm not so confident. Honestly, I don't think any of them will go through looking at their form. Because <laughs> Tottenham lost 4-1 to Leicester. And, you know, it's like Tottenham fans described it as one step forward and like three steps back. Because after beating City, you know, you think you'd kick on and try and challenge for the top four, but then you go and do a Spurs. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I want Milan to go through because for that club, it's been too long without like huge deep European nights in you know summer. Uh, why did I say summer? You know? yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So I'd want them to go to. So honestly, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. 
Is that Manyan is in back yet, right? No, I don't think he's back. I'm just going to give this particular match to Spurs because Harry Kane is world class and can make up a difference on his own. Without him, Spurs have just been, uh, Spurs have nothing to offer in attack right now. So, you know what? Middle of defense, I'll say a draw until the second yeah. leg. Yeah. yeah, a draw. And moving on to the other uh, clash involving an English team, you have Borussia Dortmund against a team that's buying almost everyone. I'm surprised this podcast hasn't been bought for 20 million at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> not, that, not that I'll complain. Uh, but it's like they're playing against Chelsea. Our boy Felix scored this weekend. Who's boy? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I thought uh, he's our new Kubu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he hasn't. He hasn't really gone. Like if, if he scored against a team like West Ham, that's equivalent scoring against a team like uh, Osasuna. So. It's... Mm. West Ham are kind of in trouble. This. But anyway, yeah. uh, in his limited amount of appearances in Chelsea D2 suspension, Del Felix has, seems to have played well and adjusted to the rigor, you know, the bruhaha, the, uh, the ditty, ditty. Uh, What else can I use to describe the league that definitely has things no other league has? The pace and power. <laughs> the, 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 the physicality. Of the Premier League, so well done to him for proving us wrong. Yeah. Now, Dortmund have been in very good form. They're really on an upward trend since you know, the return of the Bundesliga. So I hope they can do that on Wednesday. Yeah, that's it. I don't think they will, and they will let a terrible Chelsea team just rule over them. You never know, though, because they do have uh, Jude Bellingham playing for them, who's everyone's favorite player, everyone's favorite midfielder, and might go, might be the next 120. I can't lie. I can't lie. I will say something. I dislike Bellingham because, 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 because it's English? of negative. It's the same reason I disliked Mbappe for a while. <laughs> Real Madrid fans will not shut up about him. <laughs> They'll be putting him on their app. Like, it's just by negative dissociation, uh, negative association, dude. Don't take it personally. Yeah. Yeah, you never know. Maybe he'll do what Mbappe did to them in the summer. And, and then I'll absolutely adore him. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then there'll be no talk about that. The last game is uh, Benfica, poor Benfica without Enzo Fernandez. They take on Burg, who. The coach got sacked after their heroics against Atletico Madrid, so it just shows you. What and who is their new coach now? I forget. It's not. Oh, it's Scott Parker, new coach. <laughs> Add a laugh track to if you. Oh yeah, we have that. Scott Parker. You have that. <laughs> <laughs> Benfica, easy win. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. If Benfica don't win, I will sing Hala Madrid in Adamas on this pod. Okay, I'll, I'll add the soundtrack ready for next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if they win over two legs, obviously, Scott Parker can flop his way to a one-off, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. And with that, we'll end the podcast. Thanks for coming, Oscar. I hope you. No had problem. Fun. Hope you yeah, we had fun. <laughs> yeah, keep it up with the tracks and everything. Yep, I, I'm glad I finally found out this beautiful system that we have here with Riverside. Thank you for our boys in Riverside. And if you enjoyed our podcast, please give us a like, a share, comments. It really helps us. And don't forget to come back next week. Adios. Adios.